بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. We begin by mentioning the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And we ask Allah to send His peace and His blessings upon His Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Brothers and sisters, the last time we spoke in the end of the first session, Allah, the Creator, has revealed to the Prophet that now you have to go public. You have to announce it to everybody that you are the messenger coming, receiving revelation from the Creator. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, brothers and sisters, will he submit? Yes, he always walks the talk. And he's told the people, your main priority in life is to submit to the commands of the Creator. Not that he needs you. No, 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 no. But it's because you are the one who needs him. Don't ever say like, why does God need us? Because you thought he gives you assignments. No. Simple example, not perfect. When a teacher gives you a project, does that mean the teacher needs you, oh student? No. My job is not in your hands. You do the project. You do not. It's completely up to you. But when they assign you something, it doesn't mean that they need you. So when the creator assigns you something, it's not because he needs you. But he wants to give you that which is best for you. May Allah allow us to have wisdom. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. So the Prophet submits, and he does whatever the Creator says. But the Creator just gives him points, and it's him, the Prophet, who has to do the plan. Because the Prophet, Allah says in the Quran, Qudwa, he is a role model. So as a role model, we want to follow his footsteps. Ready? He goes, and he climbs on the mountain of Safa. The mountain of Safa was like downtown Mecca. He goes all the way up on the mountain. Then he yells out loud, Ya Sabaha. Ya Sabaha, which was a tradition if something is of emergency, you come up there and you call the people. So then the people start hearing, important update, important news, mayday, mayday. So the people start to come and they asked, who is it calling? Who is the one calling? What did they say? What's his name? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they said, it's Muhammad who's calling. So then everybody came because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he speaks, He's the most truthful. When he speaks, he speaks that which is important. The narration is authentic. It says that everyone came. And those who could not make it, they sent someone to represent them. So technically, every single citizen of Mecca was able eventually to know what happened. So then the Prophet, peace be upon him, and people don't know what's going on. Except the undercover believers. So then he stands and he says, oh people, if I were to tell you that there's an army behind this mountain coming to attack us, would you believe me? Did you get this? Very important. I'm going to say it one last time. If I were to tell you there's an army coming to attack us from behind this mountain, will you believe me? One person says, ma jarabna alayka illa sitqa. Of course, you never say anything except that it's true. Someone else says, مَا جَرَبْنَ عَلَيْكَ كَذِبًا We never witnessed you lying. Brothers and sisters, if I have the time, I think it's pretty unfair just to pass that point just like that. Brothers and sisters, an army coming from behind the mountain to attack the people, it's illogical. It doesn't make sense. Yet, they still believe. Okay, if an army is coming, at least we see from a distance, it's a desert, not all towers and buildings. There's nothing. The mountain is not that big that it covers the horizon. At least there are people on the sides. We can't see an army, but we will still believe him because he's, just, he's, he's, he's not normal. His accuracy, facts from childhood to adulthood. He's now 43 plus years old. Not once fabricated, not once exaggerated. Something that may seem to false to people. Not just that, they don't just can see an army, okay, okay. At least see the dust, you know, desert, there's dust, so they can see something. No traces of dust gets even more. At minimum, at minimum, I would hear rumors, rumors. By the way, the, people are saying we might get attacked. Still, as illogical as it sounds, they all believed why? Because it's logical. Someone who had roughly 43 plus years, I'm just throwing a number, I did not calculate it, tens of thousands of conversations throughout his life, and he was very social, yes or no? Very social person. And not once he made up something, not once. Now when he tells us about an army coming, he's going to lie, so they all say, you're saying the truth. Check, 
this genius, peace be upon him. He got the confirmation. You open up whatever book of biography of the prophet. No one said anything negative except that you're the truth, truthful person. He says, in translation, in meaning, I am not standing here to warn you of an army coming. And if you don't listen to me, you will face the army and suffer. I am standing here to warn you from the punishment of the creator. If you don't follow me, you will face and suffer. Well, that's as awkward as it got. But one person right then and there spoke. Right then and there spoke. It was a young man, super rich, high status, super handsome, came and says, Tabban Lak, you're a loser. Are oh, you standing up on them? You're a loser. Is that why you called? Hey, people, come over. People, come over. To say that nonsense, you're a loser. What in the world was that? Brothers and sisters, that was the first public response Muhammad Sallallahu has received. And without a doubt, the magnitude of his statement was so serious, yes or no? The first one to start a bad trend is Abu Lahab. That was his name. He didn't, by the way, how is your conviction about the Prophet so far? How did it increase a little bit? Let me just let's illustrate that. May Allah bless our sisters and our brothers who helped put this together. How is your conviction? Let's say the top of that vase, vase or vase? Forgive us. I'm ESL for two years. Allah, I'm getting there. Is it vase or vase? I say vaza, khalas in Arabi. Okay, vaza. Okay. So how's your conviction? How far are you? Well, that's increasing, bro. I think I'm gonna accept Islam, inshallah. Allah Akbar. Okay, we still have a long way to go. No problem. How is it? Do you know that what just happened of Abu Lahab saying, "You're a loser," confirmed that he's a prophet? Yes or no? Because he did not say you're a liar. You guys see that? He did not say you're a liar because he couldn't. If I, we all agree that Muhammad never lied about a family member, never lied about a friend, let alone, never lied about a stranger. Now he's gonna lie about the creator? People reflect, Allah says in the Quran, أَفَلَيْتَدَبَّرُونَ Shall you not reflect, shall you not ponder? So Abu Lahab said that, brothers and sisters, and I wanna pause for a lesson because this stories that we're sharing, just not just, okay, just have fun, but this is life-changing stuff. He started a bad trend. And whoever follows him, not they get held accountable, but Abu Lahab is held accountable. Like the one who is in a stadium is angry at a player, an athlete in a game. So this guy comes and he grabs his bottle and he throws it at the athlete. The first bottle thrown. What happens after that? You watch sports a little bit, the rest of the fans, they start throwing it. And the one who starts is the one who's most held accountable. For not for what he threw or what she threw, but whoever followed. And we live in a city. Not too long ago, I'm not that old, but remember Malice in the Palace? The Pistons versus Indiana Pacers? Like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Just you can, don't have to search it, but as an example, a player, they were fighting, then everything kind of kind of cooled down. So the player was so angry, there was a fight between players, and one of the fans grabbed a bottle and threw it at Ron Artest, the player. He got up and he jumped to the, to the what? To the whole seat and he started punching and punching and fighting. And it went chaos. After that one bottle, people fought all over the place. 2004 here. And you have examples of people in the classroom, right? Grade two, grade three, whatever. You remember the first one who was sarcastic about a cough in classroom? <laughs> so people were like, oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> first student. You are to be held accountable more than any other student because you have on your shoulders the weight of every mistake in addition to yours. So that effectiveness of such criticism from Abu Lahab of an insult, any insult that comes, Abu Lahab is responsible. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, look what he says. He says, I tell you all, protect yourself from the punishment of Allah. Protect yourself from the fire. He's calling member by member, family by family. Trust me, listen to me. Then he tells them, listen. لا أملك لكم من الله شيئا. 
He even tells his own aunt, his own daughter, Fatima. Fatima, that young, beautiful girl, he tells her, and you, Fatima, don't rely on your dad. No hookups. No, oh, I'm coming from a prestigious family. No, Fatima, you are on your own. And he tells everybody, listen, guys, all what I can do to you is be the Muhammad you've always known me to be, a man who respects and loves family. And he said that, and he says, regardless of the decision that you make, whether to follow or not, believe or disbelieve, we will always be family. Allahu Akbar, authentic narration right there. And then when the Prophet receives that statement of cursing your loser from his uncle Abu Lahab, he maintains his adab and akhlaq and character. It's my uncle. But guess what? Someone responds. What? Someone responds. Brother, turn on, inshallah, the microphone. We're about to be starting a recitation. What happens? The creator sends the angel. The angel goes to Muhammad. Muhammad receives a revelation. What is it that God told the prophet? And what will the prophet? It's his job to convey. No matter how painful it may be, the truth has to be said with absolute wisdom. And the brother, inshallah, is going to read what were the verses that were revealed. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيصلى نارا ذات لهب وامرأته وامرأته حمالة الحطب في جيدها حبل من مسد. And this was what revealed to Prophet Muhammad. What's that translation? To the best of our ability, I'll translate the part about Abu Lahab. Allah reveals tabbat yada abi lahab wa tab. Abu Lahab is the loser. Not Muhammad. Abu Lahab, you are the loser. Ma aghna anhu ma luhu wa ma kasab. You're such a loser, O oh Abu Lahab, that if you give up your whole life, you give up your all your money, you give up your status and your position, Abu Lahab, you will never get out of the circle of being a loser. Wow. Sayasla naran that lahab, O oh Abu Lahab, you're going to go to hellfire. Brothers and sisters, Abu Lahab, strike one. He could have said, he could have said, oh prophet, you're a liar, but he didn't, so that proves he's a prophet. Yes or no? Be honest. You don't have to be a believer, but be honest. This shows that he believed he is a prophet. Strike two comes what? Abu Lahab now has a grand, and I want you to focus, has a grand opportunity from day one to crush Islam. Day one, how? God just said, Abu Lahab, by name, is going to hell, correct? Abu Lahab just heard the prophet saying, in the meaning, if you follow me, you will not go to hell, correct? So the Abu Lahab can, on the spot, discredit the prophet and his message by saying, oh, okay, okay, my bad, my bad, I, God said about me, okay, listen, I'm going to follow you. That's all what he has to say. Okay, I will follow you. I will follow you so I don't go to hellfire. But God revealed it. Yes or no? So then if, uh, okay, I'll talk to God, see what I can do about this. <laughs> no. It's done. Abu Lahab, Abu Lahab, fake it, fake it. Just say, I bear witness there's no God but Allah and Muhammad. Just fake it, fake it, fake it. Come on. Just, you, you, come on. I can't. Another level of proof of, how was your conviction? Huh? How was that one? That was good. You can't deny that. That was good. How was your conviction? Khalas, I think by the end of the night, Bismillah. Huh, how is it? Is it growing? We need a lot more bottles? Do you need more bottles? Some people, halas, their conviction is absolute certainty. May Allah grant us certainty. Say, I mean, it just grows. We'll grow. We didn't see anything yet. May Allah protect us and bless our time and knowledge. Say, I mean. So he says that, brothers and sisters, and the message of Islam goes viral. Goes viral. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he conveyed the message on the mountain, and then people are hearing, what is this Quran all about? What in the world is that speech that we're hearing? This is out of this world. Brothers and sisters, a businessman comes, not from Mecca, not from Mecca. He attends to do a business dealing with Al-Abbas. Abbas, 
good man, but not a Muslim yet. He was the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, doing business. He sees a man leaving a small like room or tent and stands in front of the Kaaba, the house of God, and prays up north facing Jerusalem, but he puts the Kaaba, the house of God, in between. Allahu Akbar. Then this man, who's not from Mecca, he sees another lady, sorry, a lady leaving that same place. She stands right behind him. Then a young boy, a young teenager comes, stands next to the man. So he asks Al-Abbas, Al-Abbas, what in the world are these people doing? Like, what is this? What is that? Like, what's going on? So he says, who's this man? He said, this is Muhammad ibn Abdullah. He's my nephew. He kept doing business. And who's that lady? She is who? Khadija, his wife. And who's that young man? Ali bin Abi Talib, his cousin. And what are they doing? They're praying. <laughs> you know what he's saying? By the way, by the way, man, only three of them believe in this message, by the way. <laughs> That's it. What, this comes to show you what? That other Muslims had to hide it because they know the persecution they may face can be very tough. And the first three to publicize their belief, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Ali bin Abi Talib, and Khadija bin Tukhwalid. And by the way, you know what this, my nephew claims? <laughs> my nephew claims that if we listen to what he has to say and we submit with him, we will be successful in this life and the afterlife. And you know what he claims? This is what he's saying, I'm not making this up. You can't make this up actually. He's actually saying that his faith, his practice, his religion, and his followers, okay, will conquer the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire. The two superpowers will be conquered by this man, 55-year-old girl and a 13-year-old boy. Okay. Can I fly with you? Can we fly like really far in the future? Because I will not cover it here. Well, should I just keep the story mode? Keep story mode or tell you? Fly? You guys ready? Less than 25 years later, less than 25 years later, a man, his wife, and the cousin of this man, and their followers, less than 25 years later, Islam conquers Persia and the Roman Empire. La, la, I need seven bottles for this one. <laughs> la, la, I need like, bro, I'm not filling this up. Why do I have to say because, yes, I do want to speak in a way as if you live in the past, but I want to use the present too. I want to use the present. Go op open up your books of history. Yeah, but it was spread by the sword. Spread by what? By the sword violently. I will not discuss that now. But it means you agree that it's within less than 25 years he conquered. You agree. By the sword, by the fork, by a spoon. It's besides that point. You agree that this wonderful man with absolute conviction saying we will conquer Roman Empire and the Persian Empire within less than 25 years, it happens. Okay, whatever. Okay, Zakallah khair. Come on, humble. Be humble. I have to be humble. You have to be humble. Truth is presented, be humble. You reject the truth, after you acknowledged it, you become arrogant. May Allah protect us all, including myself, from arrogance. And may Allah make us all humble. Say, I mean. Let's go back in the past. Let's go a little bit. All right, back. But Prophet ﷺ standing next to him is Ali, behind him is Khadija. Brothers and sisters, people are very, 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 very angry amongst the leaders because they hear the message of Islam. Islam is about justice. Islam is about the black and the white are the same. Can you imagine the oppressors, the tyrants? You want to equate me and the Arab were known, some of them at that time were very racist. You want to tell me that my slave, that black man, is to be respected the way the master... Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? Islam says that we should not disrespect women because many of the Arab had no respect to women. A good chunk of them as the authentic narration states. The woman did not even used to inherit. So now the prophet is teaching them, no, a woman has a say and a woman is to be in, to inherit when her father, when her husband dies. You know, the woman at that time, as I said, the first session of this series, Women did not inherit. Women were part of the inheritance. And now he's changing all that dynamics. Forget that. Forget the first point. Point number one, he's preaching. 
these idols don't benefit. These idols do not harm. That's the biggest insult. Our social economic status is based on these idols. We cannot let this happen. So the leaders, they gather. We got to stop this man. We will basically be destroyed. We have to stop him. We have to stop this message from spreading. Personal interest versus the truth. The truth to them was not heavier than personal interest. You will face that almost every single day. Personal interest at the expense of truth. And you have the truth. Which will you choose? Which will outweigh? It says, do not turn on the red light. Personal interest, I need to go home quickly. I'm just hungry. The right thing to do is wait because you might put some people's lives on the line. An engineer, you are registered to build a 10-story building. That's the truth. Personal interest at the expense of truth. Let's try to hook it up and add an 11th floor. Four more apartments can give me a lot of more income. Every day. Plagiarism. You're, up, you're very late for your project. You're about to submit it. But I need to make up stuff. Plagiarize. That's the personal ex interest at the expense of the truth. The truth is that you're late. You have to... You have to acknowledge that and submit. May Allah protect us. Say, I mean, at all levels. So now what do the people do? Check this out. You guys ready for this? The greatest poet, the greatest of people into that speech, which the Quran, the Arabic language, the way the Quran, the way it's said and it rhymes and it means and all that stuff. The greatest poet is going to come to put this to the test. And I try to appreciate if this happens in our lifetime. Think as an example, as an example, you're playing basketball. You have your coach from high school comes to judge how good you are. If the coach says, whoa, you are an awesome player. You're like the coach of my high school said that. I ask you a question. If Michael, Michael Jordan came, as an example, I know it might be LeBron fans or whatever. May Allah protect us. If Michael Jordan comes, he sees you playing and he tells you, you're going to be a big, big, big time champion of the NBA. Will that feel like the coach from high school? No disrespect to the high school coach, no disrespect, but Michael Jordan. So he was no Michael Jordan. He was a lot bigger than he was the leader amongst all of the people of Mecca. He was the wealthiest and he was the greatest poet in all of them. So when he comes and he wants to go to the prophet and look what he says, he wants to hear, okay, what's your message like? You know what Al-Walid needs to do? Al-Walid, that's his name. All what Al-Walid is, to them, it's a piece of cake. All what it takes, all what it takes, and I want you to focus with me, is one mistake. You agree? So if he says, if the prophet speaks for an hour, an hour long, all what it takes is for him to use a, one grammatical error, correct? Because you said it's from God, and God has to be perfect. And if I notice a mistake, then I'm going to start accusing other stuff that I'm not a specialist at. And I might know if it's right or wrong. So this is my art. This is my craft. Let's put this to the test. No, 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 no. He's not just going to look if there is a mistake. He will look if there is room, if there is room for improvement. Okay, that works. But you know if you place that word, it would have been stronger. If he finds one, then that's not from God because now I know better than God. Ready? Allahu Akbar. Or he reads the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and he reads. People are watching Al-Walid's reaction. What does Al-Walid say about this? Well, Al-Walid is hearing the Quran. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh that was powerful. Oof. Right? And he reacts. And the narration, authentic, says, فَكَأَنَّ رَقَّ قَلْبَهُ His heart, as if it's like accepting the message. Al-Walid is about to accept Islam. That's how he looked like. Some narrations, they say, if Al-Walid accepts Islam, everybody will accept Islam. He's listening. Oh, by the way, does it ever happen to you like that? You hear a line and then you think it's so powerful. The other person's like, what are you talking about? This is what happened to me one time. Just to make, to make this example real to all of us. I have a friend. He's awesome in writing. And he's a big time into poetry and all that stuff. So he put something together, poetry, and he asked me to record it for him. Great brother, mashallah. One time he, said, he tells me, Bro, I want you to check the lyrics of so-and-so rapper. Bro, it's awesome. He sends me the line from part of the stanza. Okay, he sends me that line. 
So then he sends me the line and I read it. And I'm like, what did I just do? <laughs> like, what is this line all about? He's like, come on, man. Then he gives me tafsir. He gives me concise commentary about that one line. Then you know, do you know there's a website, by the way, he introduced me to it. May Allah forgive him. Alhamdulillah, there's khair, inshallah, good in it. There's a website that gives you concise commentary about rap songs. So then he said, okay, let me show you, let me show you. He goes to the website. He shows me the line. He clicks on one line in a paragraph this long. I read it, I read it. I'm like, whoa, whoa that was awesome. He felt it from hearing the one line. I guess with me. So when you hear the Quran, you're like, I don't know what you Muslims are speaking about. I don't know what, I don't feel it because you don't know the language, simple. Own rap within your own first language of English, you're like, you can't make a sound. Like, what is this supposed to mean? And there's a whole meaning behind it, yes or no? Let's go back to Al Walid. Let's go back. Al Walid hears, ooh, ooh, powerful. And who sees that? The leaders, the tyrants, the arrogant people. They get so, so concerned. We, may day, may day, we gotta gather, we gotta do something. Look at Walid's reaction. This guy looks like he's gonna accept Islam. It's pretty much over if he does. So Al Walid hears the Quran and he's walking away. And he's like, oh, this is honest. Abu Jahl of the tyrants, he comes. He says, Ya Am, uncle, because Al Walid was a big, big shot, big shot. Ya Am, uncle, I wanna let you know something. Our fellow brothers here, our community has put together a fundraiser. Collect as much money as possible and pass it down to you. He's like, Abu Jahl, what in the world are you doing? Quraysh? No, I'm the richest man in Quraysh. <laughs> I'm the wealthiest of people. What are you talking about? He's like, well, we saw your reaction <laughs> to Muhammad. And it seems like maybe you want to, maybe I don't know, want to work something out with him. I don't like partner up or something. <laughs> And you ought to get money. So we thought, it's like, this is nonsense. Then Abu Jahl says, if it's nonsense and you're not affected by the Quran and you're not affected and you don't believe in what he says, then criticize the speech. Publicize something. Publish, publish an article. Publish a speech. Publish a few lines. Come on, do something. Come on. al Walid says, Mada turid an aqul. What do you want me to say? He says, number one out of three. He says, Wallahi. I swear by Allah, the creator. He swears by God. You know what's an emergency? You swear by God, by emergency, huh? I swear to God, none of you here knows about poetry more than me. No one here knows about its fine art and details more than me. Number two, wallahi, whatever he says is out of this world. Whatever he says is nothing, un it's, it's literally unheard of before. Number three, wallahi, I swear to God. His speech is so powerful, is so eloquent. His speech is so magical and charming. His speech is full of light and guidance. His speech exceeded every expectation and nothing can exceed it. His speech is so powerful that none can compete with it. And whoever dares to compete with his speech, I'm telling you, they'll get destroyed. Abu Jahl is hearing this. He's like, are you crazy? Are you crazy? You close your mouth, right? Type of thing. So they told, listen, Walid, listen up, Walid. That's why he tells him, Ammu. Before he was an uncle, now he's like, listen, let me tell you something, all right? If you go publicize that what he's saying is magical, is out of this world, and there's no other option except that the creator, then you will no longer be at that leadership position. You will lose your status, Al Walid. You will no longer be that man who's looked up to and people ask for your opinions. You will lose it. What are you going to say about that? So Al-Walid is shaken by that. The truth and what? Personal interest at the expense of the truth. What will Al-Walid choose? Al-Walid clearly in front of his eyes, Muhammad is a prophet, yes or no? 100%. Especially, especially that what Muhammad وسلم, is saying is not something he used to even be close to from before. That's a very important point, brothers and sisters. Muhammad, peace be upon him, he threw, throughout his life, he was not good at poetry. By the way, good speakers are not good poets, yes or no? Good speakers are not good writers necessarily, and great writers are not necessarily great speakers. So Muhammad was a good speaker, but he was not a good poet at all. He never like, went to a competition or won like a bronze medal, nothing. That's how off he was. And you're telling me within... 
No time. He goes and he out of this world and all that type of stuff, and which is not even poetry. It's so powerful. I can't put a word to it. That's why they're shocked. It's like someone who's a never ever touched a hammer or a nail. Never in his life. He always calls people. Uh, can you please um, put me like a shelf in the kitchen? Uh, sir, that's a very small job. We usually take like corporate large projects. I'll pay you whatever you want. Just put that nail into that wall because I don't know where the studs are at. <laughs> okay, sir, we're going to charge you $1,000. Okay, come for I'll pay you 1000 As an example, right? Then this person who does not even hit the nail with the hammer, all of a sudden, he builds a house. Next day, I'm not saying 10 years later, next day, builds a mansion. And not any house. It's the most beautiful house that was ever built by human beings. Are you guys with me? You, we see these as commercials, right? A guy walking, so exhausted. He goes, drinks Red Bull. <laughs> what happens? He drinks the Red Bull. He has wings and he flies, right? It's a commercial. It's fake. The prophet is a better example. Within no time, someone who's not into that speech, someone who cannot read and write, someone who's saying stuff about history and the past, saying it with fine details and accuracy and word with poetry. How is that possible overnight? There's no other option, but it's from the, say it, the creator. One, one, one for Yaqub who asked us to say it, Yaqub. Takbir. Takbir. Takbir as a winner, not as someone who's defeated. Takbir. May Allah protect you all. Say ameen. So Al-Walid, he was threatened by Abu Jahl. Threatened. If you say positive things about his speech, you will lose your status. Al-Walid says, okay, da'ni ufakir. Okay, stop. Okay, just stop it. Let me go. Let me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Let me put something together. We need to think of a label, okay? I need to put some serious work into this. So Al-Walid is all alone. Are you guys with me? So Abu Jahl intervenes, and then it's done. Then Al-Walid thinks of an accusation. Leave me alone. He's thinking. He's thinking. What do I say? What do I say? Then he got upset and angry. Ugh. Because he's thinking of words, but they're not matching. He's thinking that I will say he's possessed. But I know he's not possessed. I've known him for 40 plus years. Okay, he's, he's a madman. He just went nuts. No, he's not. Look, he's walking normal. He's a sorcerer. I know sorcer sorcery and what the people do. That's not sorcery. Then he turned around, turned around, and he acknowledged that was the truth. Allahu Akbar. That's it. That's the truth. But then he said, but I will have to deny it. Then he says, you know what? I came up with it. The closest thing I can say. Then he came out to the people. Listen, you guys. That's it. I came up with this. Everybody's like, okay, Al-Walid, you're the best one at this. What should we say? Let's all unite on one word. Because we don't want to keep changing words, you know, like what the media does sometimes. All news outlet, focus on one word to label that group, right? One word, okay? Unanimous, as if they had a gathering, Qiyam layl program or something, right? They all gathered up to say one word. And that's the media back then. One word, so we don't be inconsistent and contradict each other. Okay, what did you get? This is it. Ready, guys? Yes, ready. This is what I'm saying. Three parts. Okay, go, Lulid. Number one, the closest label I have for you is that he is a magician. Okay, <laughs> his magic is in his speech. He doesn't disappear. His magic is what? His what? Speech. That's the last part. Ready for the last part? Yeah. His speech, his magic destroys families. Because we know that, brothers and sisters, that people who accepted Islam, their parents threw them out of the house, some of them. I'll never talk to you. So he's using these stories to show how Islam breaks families. They said, okay, let's go with it. Brothers and sisters, ready? Ready? Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the angel to the prophet. And the prophet goes to the revelation. Many times it's very difficult. He's sweating. And his face is changing the colors. Struggling. Revelation is coming. Maybe this happened in that revelation. Maybe in other revelations. Different ways to reveal verses. What did the creator say? Let's hear it. Ready? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Dharni wa man khalaqtu wa hida. 
وجعلت له مالا ممدودا وبنين شهودا ومهدت له تمهيدا إن ومهدت له تمهيدا ثم يطمع أن أزيد كلا إنه كان لآياتنا عنيدا أخي لحظة بس Let me translate what he said so far May Allah grant you Jannah Say Ameen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him O oh Muhammad, leave me and the one who thought he was all alone. Leave me and the one whom I created all alone. And the one who I gave so much money. Who is Allah referring to? Al-Walid. And I gave him so many children. They grew right before his eyes. He enjoyed the presence of his children. In many families, the children grew and left the house. But he's enjoying their company. They've been here even though they got older. And he wants more. He wants more. Kalla, no, he is stubborn. Ya Allah, why are you saying that? What happened? Brother continues, Zakallah khair. Sa'urhiquhu. Sa'urhiquhu sa'uda. Innahu fakkar wa qaddar. Faqutina kayfa qaddar. Thumma qutina kayfa qaddar. Thumma nazar. Thumma abasa wa basar. ثم أدبر واستكبر فقال إن هذا إلا سحر يؤثر إن هذا إلا قول البشر Okay, translate, mashallah. That's a good pause, mashallah. May Allah protect them. Say amin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you know why? He's going to get punished severely. You know why I will not give him more? Because he was in a gathering where he was thinking of what label to give to the Quran. And he wanted some time alone and he thought and he thought and he thought. Then he got angry and he frowned because he couldn't find a suitable label. Then he turned around and then he acknowledged what you said and the message is the truth. Then he chose to reject it. Then he came out to the people and said, hey people. This is some magic from ancient times. This is a magic that basically separates between people. His magic is his speech. As a result of that, Allah says, I will. Sa'uslihi saqar wa ma adraka ma saqar la tubqi wa la tadhar lawahatun lil bashar May Allah grant you Jannah, Akhi, and may Allah protect you from Allah, from the punishment. So Allah says, as a result of that, and once again, remember the effectiveness of Al Walid. Many, some people may disbelieve, but at that magnitude, because one word from Al Walid can cause some serious great greatness if he believes, correct? But now a word of corruption and criticism that is false? No, you deserve a response. So then Allah says, I'm going to take him to hellfire, to saqar. And Allah says, and what does al-walid? And the people disbelieve, they know about saqar. Saqar is a place in hell. La tubqi wa la tadhar, it leaves nothing in the body unburned. And person never dies in there. And the pain is always live and in action. La wahatun lil bashar, it's scorching to the skin. There are 19 angels guarding that place. And I want you to imagine, brothers and sisters, how is the level of proof of his prophethood now? That Muhammad is standing in prayers in front of people and he has to convey it. And he says it. And Al-Walid hears the details of his alone time. That Al-Walid hears of how God specifically said the choice of words and the accusation they want to start. Yes or no? It's unbelievable. But that adds to Walid more and more hatred. But brothers and sisters, Strike three is on the way. Al-Walid can right now fake his belief, yes or no? One more time, Abu Lahab, you're still alive, you can do something about it. Okay, Abu Lahab, you don't want to say your belief to ruin the message and discredit it. Walid, you go for it, please. Nothing. Isn't that a proof of prophethood? Are we not filling up that vase? Are we not? May Allah grant us conviction, say, I mean, we need this content. People trying to destroy this religion. People trying to step on it. May Allah protect us because wallahi, it's the truth. 
It's the truth and those who know it's the truth and chose to be arrogant and tyrants at all levels in society, whether inside a house or running a country, it doesn't matter. When they recognize the truth and they chose personal interest at the expense of the truth, they will do whatever it takes to destroy it. So what if, not what if, so what when you know that the only truth in the world is through Islam, what will the war be declared towards it? Yes or no? May Allah protect us. Say Ameen. May Allah protect you all. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. So the people of Quraysh are like, okay, this is the plan. We go spread around. He is what? He's a magician. He's a magician. And that's exactly what they do. Accusation and mockery. So they go ahead and they start calling, hey, everybody, call him magician. Muhammad is a magician. Muhammad is a magician. Muhammad is this and that. And it hurts. The prophet is a human being. It hurts him. Then the wife of Abu Lahab, look what she says. Mr. Non-praiseworthy, Mr. Unpraiseworthy. Why? His name, Muhammad, the, the linguistic meaning of Muhammad is the praiseworthy. So she's changing his name to the opposite, calling him Mr. Non-praiseworthy. He's a human being. And they go around and they make fun of him. And guess what? All that to stop him from the message. They want to destroy him emotionally. They want to kill him emotionally. Him and those who believe in him. But the prophet stands steadfast. How? Because he's a human being. How can he hear all the insults? I ask you by Allah, someone who's falsely accused after working in the society for over 43 plus years, nothing but praise was said about him. Now the whole city talks trash about him falsely. Doesn't that hurt? I swear by Allah, how would you feel? I ask you by Allah, how would you feel? How would you feel if that was done to your dad? Your dad who worked so hard for you to be the man and the woman you are today. And some group of losers, not a group, but much of the city, they falsely, underline falsely, accuse your dad. And he gets insulted. And you know why he stays steadfast? To submit to the creator. And not just that, because he loves you, because he's mercy to all beings. Because today, you are saying, La ilaha illallah. Much of you here are Muslims. You know why? After the blessing of Allah is because this wonderful man, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, he put his life on the line for you to be who you are today. Yes or no? So say sallallahu alayhi wasalam. Say may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. He suffered, he struggled. How was he comfortable? Like how was he able to continue? Because this seems very difficult because God revealed verses. God revealed verses where he says in translation, Oh Muhammad, we know, yadiqu sadruk. We know, Ya Muhammad, that you are in pain for what they say. So what do I do, Ya Allah? Allah says before that, فَصْدَعْ بِمَا تُبَرْ Muhammad, keep going. Keep conveying the message. I know it hurts you what they say about you. But Muhammad, for you to be able to withstand such low points in life and pain and sadness, this is the key, O Muhammad, and all believers. سَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ Rabbik. Glorify your Lord, brothers and sisters. That's why he's saying, and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ so that's number one I share with all of you. Before you spend the thousands of dollars, nothing against counseling or anything of that. Of course, I'm not going to reject all of that. A'udhu Billah, may Allah protect us. We need this. But can I ask you by Allah, why do you, we spend all that money and we don't use a free prescription given us by the one who manufactured every one of us? If you're down, the Creator tells you, pray to me. You vent. You want to talk? If I don't speak to someone, I'm going to die. I'm going to explode. I need to call my friend. Okay, and I agree with you. I'm an all in with you on that one. And I'm with you that you will explode. You will lose your mind if you don't vent to someone. But why not channel the venting? Channel the venting to the one who can change things. Why not? We vent to people. We're drowning. We're venting to someone else who's drowning. Why not vent to the captain on the boat who can give you Something to float on. Yes or no? Yes, vent to Allah. Oh my God, it's so cold outside. Okay, what do you want? <laughs> okay, you want a jacket? Like, what? Vent to Allah. The, yeah, Allah, it's cold. Allah can change the temperature just for you. And only on you. The way he changed the temperature of the fire on his slave and prophet Ibrahim. Yes or no? Just vent to Allah, the creator. So the prophet is told, talk to me, pray to me, you'll feel better. And he did, and he kept going. It worked. It worked. Don't go and test it. Go and do it with belief. May Allah grant it to all of you. Say, I mean. So he kept going and going, brothers and sisters, and they went to an all-time low. They went to an all-time low. Ready for this? All-time low. Muhammad Sallam had a boy. He did. His wife Khadija delivered a boy. But if you were to know 
As we said before, his boy died, yes or no? So they started, brothers and sisters, guess what? They kept saying his name will soon be gone. They're mocking the death of the prophet's son. Ha ha, your son died. Your last name will no longer continue after your death. You only got four girls. Like, like well, lie, your worst enemy. Would you ever laugh at someone's best friend funeral like that? Your own worst enemy will lie when they die. Even in Islam, tells you respect. Respect. Even if they worshipped other than God and all that stuff. Just don't. Subhanallah. Someone who's not a Muslim dies, don't say evil stuff. The Prophet, peace be upon him, one time, there was a funeral of a Yahudi, a Jewish man. The, when the funeral was passing by, he stood up. Respect. If that's what doing to someone of another faith, another family, another background, another country, another world, how can you do it to your own cousin? I'm your nephew. I'm your brother. I'm your, part of your family. But look, truth, self-interest. May Allah protect us. Say ameen. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. Brothers and sisters, we'll end with two quick comments and we'll take a break. What happened when the people saw all his steadfastness, and I don't claim to, for this to be in order. I'm not saying this is in order. But what they tried to do, the people of Quraysh, is go to family intervention. The reason they didn't go knock out Muhammad ﷺ yet, even though they would wish to destroy him, is because he has a large family backing. So if we kill him, the Arab tribal system, we seek revenge. Whether the one you killed amongst us was right or wrong, we don't care. You killed one of us, we killed you all. That was a tribal system. And Muhammad comes from Bani Hashim, big family, ﷺ. So they don't want to mess around with it. So they go, they went to the chieftain of his tribe, Abu Talib. They said, Abu Talib, Abu Jahal and the people, whoever was there. Abu Talib, listen up. Your nephew is disrespecting us. Your nephew is insulting us. Tell him to stop. He listens to you. You're a person of influence. He looks up to you. You took care of him for years and decades or whatever the case, exact years may be. Say something. So Abu Talib, the leader of the tribe, big shot. He tells his son, Aqil, Aqil, go call Muhammad. Aqil goes, calls Muhammad. The narration says it was at the peak of the heat of Arabia. That was the time. And that's when Muhammad came out right away. Comes to show you that I will maintain. Remember what he said on the mountain? I will always be the Muhammad. You guys know, remember that? And I'll always keep my family bonds regardless of your decision. Remember that? And he walks the talk once again. He leaves at the hottest point of the day. He could have said, can I come in a couple hours? Can I come in later? No, he comes. Then he comes. And then Abu Talib, the chieftain, says, Ya Muhammad. And Muhammad comes. He sees all the group like, whoa. He says, Ya Muhammad, your cousins, they're saying that you're insulting them. Your cousins are saying that you are ridiculing them. The prophet explained once and twice, and he's kind and wise and stuff. So the prophet looked at the group and, and saw that people, then he looked at the sun, I guess with me, he looked at the sun. It was bright, it was so strong. He says, it's impossible for me to stop conveying the truth. Just like how it is impossible for you to grab a candle, go all the way up to the sun, light up the candle, then come back to earth. You see how impossible that is? That's how impossible for me to stop. Unbelievable, brothers and sisters. People of steadfast. May Allah, may Allah make us steadfast. Say, I mean, he's struggling. Then they try something else. What do they do? How about we bribe this guy? We should put something together. So they said, like, who's going to talk to him? The leaders behind closed doors. What are we going to do to him? This is the last point of this session. They said, listen, we gather whatever money he wants and we're going to make a plan. Ready? Ready. Utbah goes. He goes to Muhammad. He's like, hey, are you better or your dad? See, he's using family, huh? Are you better or your dad, Abdullah? Are you better or your grandpa, Abdul Muttalib? Two big shots, especially his grandpa. If you think they are better than you, then know that they worshipped idols. And if you are better than them, then let's hear what you have. You're such an embarrassment, O Muhammad. You're ashamed to our family. You made people look down upon us. People in, around the city and outside the city are saying there's a magician from the Quraysh. What an embarrassment you are. Shame on you. You brought the name to disgrace because of your message. 
Muhammad, listen up. If what you want out of this is money, we will gather money for you. We will not just make you rich. We all agreed, you will be the richest person in Mecca. Wow. Muhammad, if you're doing all of this because there's a lady you're interested in, that's what, look how insulting, huh? Lady you're interested in trying to be like a superman, superhero, whatever it is, and show off, just give us her name and all the name of the woman that you want, and we'll bring them all for you. Muhammad listening. Can you imagine all that insult? Like, what would some people do? What did you just say? What did you just say? He said, Afaragt, are you done? He says, Yes, I'm done. Yes, I'm done. So the Prophet, what did he do? He recited Quran, Surah Fussilat, a chapter in the Quran. And he kept reading, and Utbah was listening. Whoa, whoa. Then the Prophet read and read and read and read and read the Quran. That was his response. Until he reached the verse where he says, and I have warned you of a severe punishment. Then Utbah said, stop, stop, stop. I ask you by the relationship of family bonds that we have, stop saying it. Stop. Then he went back, Utbah, to his people. Huh, did it work out? The richest man in Mecca will make him. Whatever woman he wants, we'll give him. He said, no. basically he rejected. But he said, okay, what did he say exactly? Tell us, what did he say exactly? He just said stuff like, come on, put your mind, what did he say? He said, then he said, was he not speaking in Arabic? That's what they asked him. Utbah said, yes, it was Arabic. But it was just out of this world. All I remember was the last verse. I warn you of a severe punishment. And that too does not work. Brothers and sisters, Quraysh, they gather. They gather. What should we do? What should we do? And they agree on this. It's time to go all out, to go physical. Enough is enough. They will do whatever it takes to persecute every believing man and woman, no matter what status they may be. And this is going to be a very, very tough period. And all of us, we need to know this. If not tonight, maybe at a later time. But let's take a break, inshallah, and hear what they have to go through. And hear how they respond. Zakmullah khir.